Thank you for joining us today. Um, we have other than a Google Hangout. Um, my name is Siobhan um, and I work in the Enquiries and Admissions here at the University of South Wales. Um, and this is Eric. Nice meeting you. And nice meeting you, Siobhan. You too, Eric. Um, and um, what do you do here at the university? Um, I'm a professional lawyer by trade and um, I joined uh, University of South Wales uh, last year and I'm teaching law in the law department. And uh, currently I'm covering several modules of um, postgraduate level. I'm teaching international human rights and I'm also teaching private international law and I'm also teaching trademark law and copyright law with uh, UK Intellectual Property Office. And this is a special program um, delivered to the UK IPO uh, in Newport. And that has something to do with my background because um, I, uh, before I became a human rights lawyer, I was actually a commercial lawyer specializing in intellectual property law. And uh, at the undergraduate level, I'm currently teaching Euro European human rights law and also I'm covering commercial law and consumer protection law. And um, commercial, and co commercial law is my practice area. Um, consumer law is something that I developed recently because uh, this is a new module uh, given to me by the University of South Wales and I enjoy every moment of it because at the end of the day we're all consumers oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and for example the recent uh, tumble dryer case you know if you happen to have a tumble dryer and which is affected then how are you going to claim your rights as a consumer? So the, these are the issues that we, we concern. And then um, very lucky uh, in the University of South Wales, we happen to have an opportunity um, to research into this um, subject on an academic level. Oh, perfect. So you actually use real life um, examples yes. of things that happen. Yes. So today, Eric is going to give us a bit of information go into a bit more detail about um, the courses he teaches. Um, and then um, once you have got more information about the course content, I'm going to tell you how to apply to us and so you can come and join us here at the University of South Wales and study and get taught by real professionals um, like Eric. So um, yeah, if you could give us a bit more information, Eric, about um, more of the content of your courses that we can back. Sure. Um, like I suggested that um, um, we in the University of South Wales, we adopt a, a research-led teaching approach. Yeah. So all our teaching are basically okay. research-led or based on research, based on, our, 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 you know, we have an, a team of researchers uh, who are lecturers at the same time. And we all have our special subjects that we find it interesting. And then we'll want to pass on this interest and this passion to you. Um, for example, just last month, uh, the uh, center of um, our business and, um, oh gosh, I need to <laughs> remember the name. Uh, our, um, uh, the Bark Center, we, in this particular law school, we had this uh, conference on it's called material dangers and if you're interested you can probably google it online uh, material dangers is uh, we were inspired we were we were actually motivated by the uh, sad incident in uh, bangladesh and uh, it was a, a garment factory and then there were there was a fire and then a lot of um, workers they weren't able to make their way out of the building and so this particular incident uh, made us uh, sit down and think you know, is there anything that we can do or is there anything that law can do? Um, especially we have a very close relationship with Bangladesh. And yeah, we do. We have lots of um, international students, we, as, as you know, joining us from all over the world here in this Google Hangout. Um, but we do have lots of students from, from the region of Bangladesh. Yes. So, so, so you the, actually worked with Yes. With, um, with, yes, with our Bangladeshi students yeah. and also our colleagues in Bangladesh, the, the universities in Bangladesh, we work with them. And then we looked into this particular topic and thinking, you know, is there any way that the corporate governance, the discipline of corporate governance can help or social responsibility, corporate social responsibility. And these are all modules or topics that we covered in our corporate module. 
and uh, my colleague Alex Dobson, who is a specialist in um, this uh, uh, corporate crim criminality, uh, criminal, uh, criminal liability of corporations, especially multinational corporations. Um, so we look at from different po uh, point of views, from a uh, hu international human rights perspective, from ethical accounting perspective, from uh, corporate manslaughter uh, perspective. So trying to, and even you know gender study, uh, yeah. especially a lot of workers in the in the factory, they are women. Yeah. And child labor issues. So we are looking at these issues from different disciplines and then trying to come up with an interdisciplinary approach and see if there's anything that we as academics can do. And so and using that experience, we uh, feed them into our teaching. Yeah. So uh, we will we will use one um, you know common theme. But develop different strands, and then use the, these different strands in all the different topics and subjects. Exactly, that sounds really interesting and really relevant to the students as well, because yes. it's using examples that they are familiar with, I suppose, in the yes. news and things like that. Yes. Wow. And then, um, so the, uh, this conference has been a success, and then. Um, Based on this success, we, de we decided to uh, make it bigger and larger. And then, uh, so in April 2017, uh, we're going to have a bigger conference uh, also in Wales. And then, so hopefully that by that time, uh, we'll be able to, you'll be able to join us and then to participate in this event and to contribute. And we're looking forward to hear your feedback. And um, so this is one of the examples. One of the large number of yes. examples. Yes. Um, but um, the, uh, the sort of research-led teaching uh, is something that... That underpins everything. Exactly. Yeah. And then we hope that by such enthusiasm, uh, we can um, you know, engage our students into not just teaching, but learning. You know, because yeah. uh, right now, teaching is really, especially when students are interested, are engaged, teaching is really a very small part of our daily life. What's more, what's more important is the learning process. Yeah. Because once you're interested, once you're engaged, you will do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> you will do uh, the, the things that you think which is necessary yeah. to facilitate your learning. So I think that here there is a flipped uh, class. There is a flipped classroom situation. We will want you to teach us at the end of the day because we've been there, done that, and uh, we we are professionals and we want to. Uh, feedback. We want to help you to become a professional. So that's uh, the main purpose of uh, legal education today. Sounds really interesting. Oh. <laughs> I want to sign up. Good. <laughs> yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so that's the well. You just touched on all the topics. I think in in one case. <laughs> Well, I think that's uh, the beauty of uh, interdisciplinary study. Yeah. That um, you know, because really every no man is an island nowadays True. so especially with the internet with um you know everyone is capable of doing your own research so even when you're buying a pair of shoes you are conducting research so you yeah. know which pair of shoes is the best and uh, we will use that sort of scenario um using your experience as a consumer to bring you into the subject for example consumer protection law um when you're buying phones which package is the best and also which what are, are there anything that a consumer like you should pay attention to and these are all the sort of information that we think might concern you as a consumer um, in this particular country especially in terms of consumer rights protection uh, there's a new, new piece of legislation consumer rights act 2015 uh, which is a brand new piece of legislation consolidating all the previous consumer protection legislations. So this is an exciting time, especially for this module, because you will be able to receive the most recent and latest information about how to protect your own rights. So um, in this particular module, for example, we use the uh, tumble dryer case. Yeah. Um, so if you happen to have a tumble dryer who, who, which is overheating all the time, be careful, you know, but how are you going to claim your right back as a consumer? So these are the uh, issues that... Uh, yeah, we real life issues again. Real life issues, yeah. exactly. Real that resonates, issues. I suppose, with the, with the learners and it makes things even more interesting. Yes, and yeah. um, the student feedback 
is uh, they found um, the, the uh, consumer rights uh, uh, module particularly relevant because everyone has the experience. Yeah. So this links back to um, the, um, the experiential learning you know, theory that if you have some sort of experience, then you'll, you'll be able to acquire the knowledge faster and more effectively. And um, true, it is possible that we are not all familiar with all the situations in life. And I'm not afraid to admit that I didn't understand property law at all until I bought my first house. And then that's and then you have to. <laughs> so and so I think that that explains that sometimes you may experience some difficulties in your learning process because you haven't got that sort of life experience. But don't worry, um, you will come. And when it comes, you'll suddenly realize, ah, I've seen this before on books. I've seen this before yeah. in textbooks. So I know, pretty much know, uh, I have pretty much have a rough idea of what's going on. And then that you enter into the second stage of learning, which is deep, deep, deep any learning. Of our, if any of our international EU students are struggling in their studies, is there, is there student support there to, to help them? And, and what sort of facilities do we have as well for um, our students? True. I think, um, you know, learning without assessment is moot because uh, I think that um, most of us put assessment in a very um, crucial um, point. I think that we probably have to think of assessment as a way to understand how much you have learned and it is your, your journey. Um, not necessarily in order to get a higher mark because um, what's more important is what have you learned? What have we learned? So if we treat assessment as a way to find out how much have we learned, um, you'll be less anxious, you'll be less stressful. And this is something that we've been trying to tell our students. Um, so if we think about assessment as a way of self-assessment, then our job is to help you to uh, cope with the extra stress and, 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 and anxiety. And um, don't get me wrong, we all get anxious or stressful sometimes. So it's not just students. And uh, so I think stress management and also uh, counseling service and also pre-exam uh, uh, revision sessions and also sometimes the use of, um, you know, just sit down and talk with us for five minutes uh, will help you a lot to guide you to the uh, right direction. Um, currently, uh, there are two hours of um, we, you know, every lecturer in the law school, uh, we have designated two hours per week for uh, such, um, you know, uh, office hours. We call them. That's so, if any, if students need yes. to come and speak to you about any problems or, exactly. or questions that they've got, then they're able to come and speak to you outside of learning hours. Yes, you know, there are yeah. a lot of opportunities. Yeah. You know, because. Um, you bump into us in the corridor sometimes, and then sometimes just a five-minute chat or yeah. a cup of coffee will help a lot. Of course, yes. yes. So, uh, uh, but mandatorily, uh, mandatory, we have two hours of office hour, um, and if you make an appointment with us, and um, you know, if we can see you in ten to fifteen minutes to solve your problems, I, I think that most of my colleagues and myself. Um, are very willing to do that. And before exam, we normally have revision sessions. Yeah. So we will, um, and personally, I have a group uh, revision and I also have individual revision sessions. So group revision sessions, we encourage students, you, to uh, answer your own questions, um, you know, as part of the peer learning process, that because you are all learning the same thing. So you understand, you, you generally understand what are the what are the questions, and then so I will facilitate your discussion in these group sessions. And in addition to the group session, if you have individual questions and you, do, you didn't feel comfortable asking in front of other students, you can always use the office hour mentioned earlier to come and see me in private, ten to fifteen minutes. We can talk about your anxiety, your stress, or even sometimes strategy. So these are all the things that we have at the moment. Yes. That helps students a lot, I'd imagine. We hope, because yeah. like like I said, our job is to help you 
learn get the best experience. to get the best learning experience and also to enjoy the journey to enjoy the ride and mm -hmm. um, our job is not to penalize you so uh, I think um, that is the that is a, a common belief in this particular department and then I believe that all of my colleagues uh, we, we all believe in the same yeah, of course. yes brilliant. Oh, again where do I sign up <laughs> <Sounds brilliant. laughs> Okay. Yes. So that's um, pretty much the, um, the the general situation. And um, feel free if there is any question that you have. You don't have to wait until the last moment. Um, please, it is uh, you know this interactive environment is uh, designed for you to ask questions at any time. So please feel free if you happen to have any question. Right. Has given us a whirlwind whistle top stop tour of all of the um, modules that you study. Um, so, if you are interested in um, applying to join us, or if you've um, been made an offer already um, and you are looking to join us in 2017, um, I'll just talk you through a little bit now about um, about what you need to do next. So, um, if you are applying to us um, from um, outside of the EU. Um, you can make your application online um, via the um, University of South Wales website. So all of our applications are dealt with online. Uh, so you just need to register a MyUSW account and then um, submit your application to us. Um, or if you um, prefer, you can apply through UCAS. That's only for um, undergraduate courses. So if you're applying for a postgraduate course, do it directly via our website. Um, and we are accepting applications now. Um, we've got two intakes coming up next year, so it'll be April, February 2017 for some of our postgraduate courses. And we've got the September 2017 intake as well. So um, we just encourage you to put your application in as soon as you're able to, so we can pick it up here in the Inquiries and Admissions Office um, and get a uh, process in it. So once you've made your application to us, um, it's usually within five days, that would be the maximum time that you'd wait to hear something from us. So it would either be um, as asking you for more information, um, sometimes applications come through and there's a bit of information missing, and then we just send you an email um, explaining what we needed to process your application further. Um, or, fingers crossed, we're in a position to make you an offer. So you can come and join us and um, yeah. meet um, Eric and all of the other highly talented um, law lecturers that we have here at the university. Um, so yeah, hopefully you're in a position where you've made an offer, that's where we want to get you to. And once that happens, um, you need to accept the offer. So you either do that on UCAS using your um, UCAS track account, or you do it online using your MyUSW account with us um, online on the University of South Wales website. Um, so you accept your offer and then um, you're either in a position where you've got an unconditional offer which is great news and then we don't need anything further from you um, or you've got a conditional offer and um, either case we'll send you information about um, what we need if it is a conditional offer and sometimes people make applications to us and it's conditional on them um, completing their current um, study if they're still in study or sometimes we need things like references, but whatever, um, if there is information required, that will be explained in your offer letter. Um, and then the next step would be, if you are coming from outside the EU and you um, need to apply for a tier four visa to study here with us, um, you need to, once you were in a position where you had an unconditional offer with us, um, you then need to make a deposit payment. So all of this information um, will be outlined on your offer letter, which is always um, emailed out to you. Um, and that will explain um, the money that you need to pay to us um, and um, what you need to do next um, in order for us to release your CAS statement, which is a document that you need um, to make um, your visa application. That's, and this is only applicable um, if you are going to apply for a T or 4 visa. This is not relevant um, for EU applicants. Um, so that's just a really brief um, overview of the admissions process. If you've got any questions at all, please um, please ask them now um, on the, the live session here or send us an email. So the um, email address for the inquiries and admissions team 
is um, international.admissions at southwales.ac.uk. We can find lots more information um, online on the University of South Wales website as well. Okay, so um, I think we are going to have um, a look at some um, questions that are asked. Um, so um, let's have a see. So we've got a question here from somebody asking about um, uh, how they will be assessed on the course. So um, whether it will be exams, coursework, or a combination. So if you could um, answer that question, Eric. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, the methods of assessment depend on the module. And um, currently, for example, for my international human rights, uh, it is basically a coursework, but it's at level seven, postgraduate master level. So uh, uh, the requirement is 6,000 words and of coursework. But normally we give them uh, an interesting subject, interesting topic. For example, uh, how about wearing hijab in uh, UK campus? This sort of um, uh, real life example yeah. and with case law. So um, the feedback is uh, normally quite positive. Students quite enjoy this sort of um, um, real life based question mm -hmm. and um, uh, so that is for postgraduate. Okay. For undergraduate it's probably a combination of everything. Sometimes it's uh, coursework and sometimes it's exam, sometimes it's half coursework, half exam and some of my colleagues uh, they are uh, quite creative and they will use portfolio and because we understand that um, you know not everyone enjoys exams yeah. And also, not everyone enjoys coursework either. So you need to strike a balance between exactly. the two. That's right. So, so it's dependent on the module you study, yes. what the assessment will be. Yes. But uh, because, after all, law is a professional course, so uh, we are uh, bound by the, uh, um, the um, supervising um, authorities like solicitor, so, uh, the law, law society or the uh, QAA and yeah. quality control. So uh, there are a lot of modules that we have to teach you the basic and and that's exactly what uh, you want to become a professional practitioner which is I can't say that it's easy but if it's not hard if it's not hard it's probably not worth doing <laughs> so uh, but our job is to uh, make this experience as comfortable as possible and to facilitate your understanding of law and but eventually you want to be a professional and that's why we're here for you so assessment wise uh, we do think that um, uh, it's a mixture of both a lot and then uh, it depends on the uh, module and the module leaders uh, uh, they, they're thinking you know if they yeah. think that in this particular module an exam is a better approach and then uh, that's their discretion yeah of course brilliant thank you um, okay we have another question here um, will I have the opportunity to put the skills I learn in the lectures into practice during my course okay. now, that's a great question isn't it because it is Yes. Um, in addition to lecture, we also have workshops. So, uh, in, for example, in undergraduate study, in general, one lecture is combined with uh, one workshop. So, uh, for example, I just gave a, an hour of lecture on uh, European human rights law uh, uh, last Monday, and uh, sorry, last Friday, and this Monday we had a workshop and we used okay. more courts. Uh, ah, as a way to facilitate. That's a great facility that we've got here, isn't it? Especially for law students, yeah. you're very lucky because uh, we have a state-of-the-art moot court yeah. uh, facility, so students are able to um, um, to have an authenticated uh, learning experience, pretending that you are a practitioner yeah. and defending for your clients. And so uh, these sorts of activities are there are a lot of such. Um, activities in, in legal education and um, especially in uh, some controversial topics uh, will call, uh, turns out to be quite a good way of, um, of engagement and yeah. then also um, in some situation uh, your feedback from the MOOCOR can be assessed as well so it can be used as part of your assessment okay. so there are a lot of different ways to assess yeah. uh, one's learning uh, process um, so, um, yes, so for example, undergraduate we have lectures, 
and we have workshops. Uh, for postgraduate study, we mainly use seminars, which is a mixture of lectures and um, a discussion and workshops. And then also there are a lot of activities involved. Sometimes we'll ask you to draft a contract, for example, how to negotiate uh, during a settlement, and then how to draft a, uh, a settlement agreement. So that's exactly what the students would be doing if they were practicing? Yes, that's exactly what I would what I was doing when I was a training <laughs> solicitor and then so we want to introduce that element into yeah. your learning as well. So uh, so this sort of legal drafting skills um, or um, uh, um, representational skills are something that we pay um, a lot of attention to. Yeah, it's a real life experience that they can take away with them and then put into practice when they're Yes. In the world of work. Yes, including presentation. How to do a presentation, 10 to 15 uh, minutes of presentation and to grab the attention of your audience. And that's also part of the advocacy uh, work that um, you're going to engage in the future in your, in your profession. So these are all uh, different things that we do. Um, not just because you have to do it, it's also because they're fun and they are part and parcel of your learning yeah. experience. Oh, brilliant. Um, thank you for that. Um, so we've got another question um, here from um, somebody who wants to know a bit more information about intellectual property law. So is that topic covered um, as part of any of our courses? Um, we are currently, uh, you know, uh, I think um, this is pro this is a good question for my colleague um, um, uh, Stefano. But, uh, but, Yes, and this is a good question for my colleague Stefano because he is uh, the main um, person in charge. He's the course leader of our intellectual property program. Um, our currently our intellectual property program is delivered in a UK IPO within uh, the, the uh, their office, and then. Um, uh, Stefano, he's teaching patent law and IT law oh, wow. and also uh, 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 communication. And then um, I'm assisting Stefano teaching trademark law and also copyright. We share the module of copyright law. Does this come under undergraduate level or postgraduate? Uh, this is postgraduate, postgraduate level, level, yes, and then uh, it's a sheer pleasure to work with him. And then uh, we, because both of us are intellectual property lawyers, yes. so um, you know the conversation that we have uh, sometimes is itself a very good learning experience. Yeah. And then um, so we're using um, our uh, expertise in intellectual property to um, inspire ourselves and then also use our research uh, to lead our teaching. Uh -huh. And um, so I have to say that so, uh, out of all the modules that I teach, that's one of the uh, most um, encouraging one, because also because uh, we are engaging with real professionals. Yeah. So with that expertise, we really hope to bring that experience to our academic um, environment and um, I'm not sure whether or not we are uh, delivering the intellectual property law modules in within uh, in Trafaris mm. next year uh, but I would like to see that yeah. because uh, you know it would be a nice link uh, with the real professional world with academic world yeah. because that um, we ha we're, we're quite lucky in the University of South Wales that we're in the position to be able to provide this particular program to UK IPO and with uh, Stefano's expertise, uh, there, there's a lot that we can actually take to feed into our students. Yes, the students. Yes, so I think that um, the, 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 the answer is I don't, have, I don't have a confirmation, but uh, we're certain. It's something that's certainly taught. Yes, yeah. it's certainly something that we're able to do and uh, we can do it very well and we are hoping that one day um, you know, we'll be able to provide the same level of programs yeah. in uh, Trafaris yeah. and to serve uh, the rest of our student body. But it sounds like the overarching theme here is that all of the um, things that are taught are, are research that are done, right? It, it is. comes from the experience of, yes. of all the lecturers. Yes, especially uh, Stefano is an editor of a well-known journal.
journal, intellectual property journal, and I can I come from practice, so uh, there's a lot of inter lot of interaction between theory and practice, yeah. especially when delivering it in a professional body. Yeah. So uh, that is something that uh, we're both very excited about. Yeah, and that's something that's a great um, experience that the students will get. Yes. Um, that join us here yes. to get experience from from the world of employment and you know real life experience yes. they, from both of you. Yes. Oh, perfect. Right. We've got another question here. Um, will I get to use these skills on any placements? Yes. The answer is yes because, uh, for example, the legal drafting skill. Um, I think that if you want to become a solicitor, legal drafting skills and negotiation skills, these two skills are probably the most important and they're used daily in your job. And for advocacy, if you want to become a barrister, then a more court uh, presentation, uh, these are uh, very important skills for a barrister. So yes, of course, all the things that you learned are transferable. Yeah. That are all, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, legal education it started as a professional education and the purpose is to train lawyers. So all the skills that you've learned in school should be used in daily practice in the future. And if they can't be used uh, in, in daily practice, then they're probably not very good skills. But we're quite confident that um, you know, the things that we are, we've designed to give it to you are the things that you need in the future in your career. Brilliant, oh, thank you. I'm not sure if we've got any more questions. Let's have a see. Oh, <laughs> Stefano has confirmed he will be happy to provide information about any courses or questions anyone has about the um, intellectual property courses. Yes. <laughs> so the same with um, questions about any of the Google Hangout that you've um, that you've watched today. If you've got questions about uh, the application process, um, then you're very welcome to give us a call um, in inquiries and admissions or to email us. Like I said, um, email address is international.admissions at southwales.ac.uk. Um, so if you've got any questions or queries about um, how to apply or if you already have applied and you're wondering um, about the next stage of, um, of the application process, um, or if you've got any questions, Eric's touched on a lot of information and uh, really interesting stuff this afternoon. If you've got any questions about the content of our courses, um, then please feel free to, um, to contact us um, after this session has finished. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, let's have a see. Uh, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, so what is the difference between the um, LLB law and the LLB law accelerated route and which one is most applicable? Um, for, okay, I think this is probably quite a personal question and yeah. then we're, pro we're unable to give specific uh, guidance uh, in this uh, session. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're very welcome to come to talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. We or, are... or contact us. So, yes. um, the LLB Law and the LLB Law Accelerated, um, it, the, the different um, entry points. So, um, it would be dependent on your, your previous um, study and your previous experience for us to determine um, which route is going to be most suitable for you and um, so I think perhaps with that one Matt if you could um, send an email to us um, said it a couple of times now I'm hopefully not going too quickly but it would be um, missions at southwales.ac.uk and um, just um, giving us a bit of uh, information about your profile and then we can advise you on um, which course is going to be the most suitable for you um, to join based on what you've done previously. Yes, and uh, one of my colleagues, Claire, she is always very helpful in helping students to make their decision. So um, once you're here, um, please feel free to book a 10 or 15 minute session with her and I'm sure that she will be able to guide you through and then help you to decide which um, module is um, best for you personally. So you can personalise it dependent on the outcome yes. that the students want to get from the experience. Yes, but we need to know more about your personal oh, information. Yeah. So I don't think this is uh, the best forum to, no, no, to, no, to do that. So I, so. I, you're very welcome to contact us um, yeah, afterwards absolutely. and we'll have, uh, do the, the best that we can. Okay, there's another question here. Um, 
I would like to know more about the international law courses and assessments. Okay, uh, there are several international law courses uh, being provided in this law school. Uh, we have international and European law, we have international human rights law, we have international sports law, and we also have international commercial and consumer law. So, uh, as you can see, the common denominator is international. That is because um, our background is international. So uh, I personally am a, a registered uh, lawyer in New York. So I happen to know both the North American jurisprudence and the British jurisprudence. And um, in terms of international law, it depends on your interest. Um, if it is international public, public international law, then of course, then that's uh, about the relationship between states. And the current debate about uh, Brexit and EU Article, uh, EU Article 50 uh, is also some, uh, um, you know, interesting subjects that my colleagues and I are particularly interested in. And if your interest is in private uh, law, for example, commercial, consumer, uh, conflict of laws, or international sports law, uh, something to do with business and com uh, co commerce, uh, we also have um, international commercial, consumer law, sports law, these modules for you to, to you know, uh, pursue. So it depends on, again, it depends on your interest and uh, what kind of, um, which area of law would you like to practice in the future? And um, that, will that, will, that will decide the outcome. Assessment uh, in terms of, most of our international modules are delivered at postgraduate level. And at the postgraduate level, it, the, the assessment is basically essay writing. For example, uh, international human rights requires a 6,000 words of essay at the end of the module. And then uh, there will be a given topic, um, like I said, um, for example, hijab wearing in campus, it can be a, a topic for your assessment and you are encouraged to find out the case law from the European Court of Human Rights or from other international courts and to compare and contrast their similarities and their differences. And also, in, uh, eventually, we would like you to have to develop a critical analysis ability to find out why hijab wearing is prohibited in some countries but not in this country. And so these are the sort of critical analysis the ability that we want you to, de to develop um, you know, after the module. And assessment itself, is, it may sound daunting, but we do have formative assessment to help you uh, to ease the, uh, the process. So during, probably in the middle of the module, we will have the opportunity for you to write a formative assessment, which is not included in your final result, but it will be used as an opportunity to, for you to check your own study. And also it, is, it, it, is, it acts as a taster of our marking criteria. Uh, in University of South Wales, uh, there is a school-wide marking criteria, and then we look at five different areas in your uh, writing, in your legal, you know, including the understanding of law and your critical analysis and <laughs> critical analysis ability, and also referencing, and also your coherence and your logic. So these are uh, the five major areas that we look at in, the, uh, in, in our marking and they are stipulated in the um, marking criteria and it is published right in the beginning uh, in your induction um, to, or in the beginning of your modules. So you'll know in the very beginning how do we mark and also will help you along the way to um, develop your writing skills. So for example, the formative assessment is a, three, a shorter version, it's a 3,000 word essay, which is not going to be marked, but you'll be given feedback. Uh, and this can be used as part of your understanding of how we're going to mark your paper at the end of the day. And also, should you fail your uh, summative assess, I'm sorry, should you fail your summative assessment, we can always look at your previous performance in your formative assessment to verify your understanding of law. So, um, you know, these exercises are, are designed to help you to, um, you know, to reduce your anxiety and stress level and also to help you to understand how do we mark your papers at the end of the day. 
So it's all about expectation management. Yeah. So, so that's like the support along the way as well. Yes. And help for the students yes. needed. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Okay. Right. I think we're winding up the questions now. Unless anyone has any other questions to ask. Um, if you do have questions, but you're nervous about putting them on here, which is absolutely understandable. Um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us after this um, Google Hangout finishes. All of our contact details will be available um, on here afterwards. And if you want to watch this back as well, you'll be able to um, when we finish today, because um, there's been a lot of information given, and um, it's all really interesting. So if you there were points that you think, oh, I want to watch that back, then this, um, this session will be available to, to watch back a little later on. OK. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's everything. Unless anyone has, no, we're not getting any more questions through. Um, okay, right. So, um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you've learned a lot. I certainly have. Oh, we have got another question. I'm sorry. Um, We've got, we've mentioned um, previously about the different intakes that we have. So there's um, September 2017 for our undergraduate and our postgraduate legal courses. Um, but we just had a question, um, is there an option to start earlier than September? So um, happily there is. Um, for our postgraduate courses, we have got a February intake as well. So um, after hearing um, all of the exciting things that you could be um, learning and studying when you come to study with us, if you can't wait until September, then we have got an intake in February 2017, courses starting on the 6th. Um, so um, like I said earlier, applications are now being accepted for both intakes. So if you are looking to join us in um, September or February, like I said, February is the postgraduate courses that, we, um, that we've got an intake for. Then you're very welcome to apply um, online as soon as you're able to, and um, we can get that um, processed for you. Okay. Yeah, I think that's everything. I don't think we've got any more questions. We'll just do another quick check. Oh, we have. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not trying to run away from you. <laughs> Please feel free to keep asking the questions. Um, so we've got a question here asking if there's a law society at the university. The answer is yes. <laughs> um, we just uh, this Monday, we happen to have an employability um, event. Um, being held in this particular law school, and uh, we success, and which is um, uh, hosted by our law society, and uh, the, our law society, with the assistance of the dean, they've um, um, invited probably ten to fifteen potential employers oh, okay. to come to uh, Trafara's campus, including very well-known names uh, in the industry. And um, the Law Society has done a brilliant job uh, in terms of employability, and also our students all dressed up and then uh, made good con uh, contacts in th this uh, very unique uh -huh. and successful social event. And uh, they've all made contact with uh, potential employers, law firms, uh, government and also uh, civil services and even um, media uh, channels, uh, well speaking channels. So uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, social events around um, uh, being organized by the Law Society and um, your uh, welfare uh, is uh, being taken care of by uh, your own student body. Uh, very carefully, and uh, as a school, I believe that my colleagues and I will do whatever, we, whatever we can to assist your own development. So um, yes, there is a not not only that there is a law society, there is actually a very thriving, productive, and effective one. <laughs> but hopefully, um, we, uh, when you join uh, the USW, you'll be able to contribute to this uh, student body as well, because That's after all, this is yours. And you gain a lot of experience and like you said, contacts and all different things. So yes. Really exciting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we've had another question as well. Is it possible to speed up the studying process and finish earlier? Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that really. It would be like I mentioned before. We have um, we had a previous question about the accelerated group for the LLB. Um, it's all dependent on, I suppose, your previous study, isn't it? And it would be dependent on what level you you, you studied at previously. If you sometimes would be able to join us at advanced level, um, or dependent on whether you studied law previously and you'd you'd studied modules that that met the criteria to to join us at advanced level. Um, but with the postgraduate courses, it's it's probably not likely is it to join to to speed up the process of studying? Postgraduate is probably uh, because, um, well, the our postgraduate program, especially master, is a very short period of time. Exactly, it's one yeah. year. So I don't think that uh, it is likely to speed up that yeah. particular process. But in terms of other um, uh, pathway, path, pathways. I think that we happen to have a joint route of a law and LPC. So we call it this uh, one plus one that you can actually do your LPC, uh, you can actually do your uh, uh, legal study um, and do your LPC at the same time. Um, I think that I don't have the exact information, but if you are interested, I'm pretty sure that you can probably find it online and looking into our law slash LPC program, uh, which is uh, probably one of a kind uh, in this particular jurisdiction at the moment. That is a combined course of your legal study and your LPC. For those of you who are not familiar with the terms. LPC is a special uh, a program for solicitors. So if you want to be, if you want to become a solicitor, our law plus LPC program, uh, you can become a law student and enrolled in the LPC program at the same time. And um, if there is a big if, if you study hard, and then it is possible to speed, uh, to speed up your process of studying. That the that you said the postgraduate um, courses um, they they are a postgraduate short period of time anyway sure. comparatively um, to some other uh, courses offered elsewhere so you can gain a, a postgraduate um, level qualification yes. in as short as twelve months yes that's probably is, the shortest I know yeah and also at the end of the day it depends on uh, you know each individual student exactly. And um, you know, not all students want to finish this pleasant experience. You know, <laughs> they want to prolong uh, this uh, experience to do a further study in, in postgraduate yeah. or even doing a PhD. So um, it depends. And I think um, if you come, if you come to us, and then we will uh, have the we'll, we'll find the best way to help you. Um, you know, to design uh, your own learning experience, and then we'll do whatever we can within. The, uh, within law <laughs> uh, to to speed up the process for you. Brilliant. Okay, um, so I think that's all the time that we have um, for questions. Um, I really hope that you've um, taken away some um, information today that you found really useful and helpful. Um, but if there's anything at all that you've got any questions or queries on, in relation to applying to study here at the University of South Wales, or like I said before, if there's anything you need to know about the content of the course, any of our legal courses, please, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, we're here and we're, um, we're really happy to speak to any of you that, that have got any questions. Um, so thank you very much from me, Siobhan, in Inquiries and Admissions for joining us today. And- Eric, you're from law school. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.